Hello, soon to be licensed nurse practitioners. Miss Cohen here with the Cohen Review, and we need to talk about community acquired pneumonia. This is a hot topic on the exam, regardless which test you're going to take family, adult, acute. And it can be confusing because there are multiple therapies that you could use. It all depends on the type of patient that you get. I've been getting a lot of emails requesting for me to further explain this, and this is what I'm doing today. So pay attention to this lecture as it's really important that you understand how do you treat community acquired pneumonia for the purposes of the nurse practitioner board exam. So let's review. And remember, how I teach is keeping things as simple as possible. So let's dive into it. When establishing a diagnosis of community acquired pneumonia, you have to order your chest x-ray. That will show you if it's, let's say, tuberculosis, which will be upper consolidation versus an actual pneumonia which is the schmutz at the bottom of the lungs. Symptoms that will make you think of a infection pneumonia, fever, dyspnea, cough, and clearly sputum production. Now, things to keep in mind is, are you caring for this patient yourself or are they so sick or do they need to become inpatient? So when would you refer this patient to the emergency room to become inpatient? Well, clearly septic shock, respiratory failure, inability to maintain oral intake. Also, if you have concerns with adherence to therapy, history of substance abuse, mental illness, cognitive or functional impairment, and any concerns about living or social situations, such as the patient being homeless. If the O2 saturation is less than 92%, get them out. And also, you know about CURB 65. If you don't, make sure you review my respiratory lecture that goes over the CURB 65. But remember, if you have two or more for the curve 65 points, you need to send them to the emergency room. Things to keep in mind, epidemi whoops, can say that, epidemiology versus antibiotic selection. Community acquired pneumonia, most common condition encountered in the outpatient setting and can be associated with significant morbidity, particularly for older patients, smokers and those with comorbidities or immunosuppression. That's why it's so important that we treat this and we treat it correctly. Now, principles of antibiotic selection for all outpatients are empiric regimens are designed to treat the most common bacterial causes, uh, such as strep pneumo, H influenza, and atypical pathogens. Now, coverage is expanded for better, uh, to better treat additional gram-negative pathogens um, as needed, which we'll go over, but keep it simple, all right? Um, we're going to go over patients that are, you know, healthy, less than 65, uh, no antibiotic use, or for people who have comorbidities and need something for better coverage. But keep it simple. I'm going to go into further detail. And actually make sure you know which are the most common causative organisms of community acquired pneumonia. And I know you reviewed that in my lecture, strep pneumo, H influenza. Now, uh, students have asked, well, how do I know if I'm treating this because it's viral with antiviral therapy or bacterial with antibiotics? Very good question. But for most patients with mild community acquired pneumonia, we treat it ambulatory setting. Um, we don't necessarily have to order microbiologic testing. And again, for the purposes of the exam, you most likely will be asked about the patient that has the bacterial community acquired pneumonia. That's what you need to learn. If it's viral, Clearly, you're going to treat it with antiviral therapy, but that's not what the boards want you to know. They want to make sure you know your bacterial regimen. So that's what I want to discuss. If it's bacterial, we're going to use our empiric therapy. If it's viral, we use antiviral. Now, how do you know if it's antiviral? If you really want to know, not for the purposes of the exam, there are certain things on your evaluation that would make you think more viral versus bacterial. One of them would be the presentation on the chest x-ray, uh, the blood counts, if, if the white blood cell is not elevated, um, you would think more viral versus bacterial. You can read this slide yourself. This is way more than you need to know for the purposes of the exam. So let's dive into what you need to know, and that's how do you treat bacterial community-acquired pneumonia? And this is my way of simplifying things for you. Community-acquired pneumonia treatment. Viral, antiviral therapy, clearly. But if we're thinking drugs, is your macrolide or doxy plus a beta-lactam? So let's talk about it. Two types of population you need to keep in mind. One is your healthy, 
less than 65 years of age with no antibiotic use in the past for, the, for whatever symptoms they're having, right? The preferred treatment, option number one, preferred, would be your amoxicillin one gram plus your macrolide. Remember, macro, macrolide could be your acetromycin, chlorothromycin. If for whatever reason, let's say they can't use a macrolide, allergies or they get nauseous, whatever, you could switch it with doxy. So option preferred number one, amoxicillin with a macrolide. Option number two, if they can't do a macrolide, switch it with the doxy, amoxicillin and doxy. If they have a penicillin allergy, get rid of the amoxicillin and introduce cefpodoxime or cefpodoxime, whatever you want to call it, plus your macrolide or your doxy. If for whatever reason, all of the above fails, you could still use your fluoroquinolone, your levoquin, for example. Great choice. But remember, we like to leave our big guns for the very last resort. Because we're so afraid of drug resistance, this is our last line. And we don't like to abuse it or use it unless we really have to. For that reason, if you can't give a mox, or cefpodoxime, or macrolide, or whatever the above, you could still treat with fluoroquinolone. It is not our preferred treatment, though. So I've created this chart on the bottom to give you that visual, because I think visual learning is amazing. So keeping it super simple, healthy, less than 65 years of age, with no prior antibiotic use, first choice, amox plus macrolide, or second choice, amox plus doxy. If they have a penicillin allergy, do not give them amoxicillin because that falls under the penicillin family and switch it with cefpodoxime plus a macrolide or cefpodoxime plus doxy. If for whatever reason you can't use any of the above, you still have your fluoroquinolone. Now let's talk about that second um, type of patient you may get. This is the patient with the comorbidities, older than 65, who have used or who have used antibiotic in the past. The preferred treatment, number one, would be augmentin plus a macrolide. If you can't use the macrolide for whatever reason, use augmentin plus doxy. If they have a penicillin allergy, do not give them augmentin because it's under the penicillin family. Switch it with cefpodoxime plus macrolide or cefpodoxime plus doxy. And if all of that fails, you could still use your fourth line, which would be your fluoroquinolone. Now, look at the chart. Let's look at the differences to keep it very simple. The only difference between healthy less than 65 with no antibiotic use versus the comorbidities over than 65 with recent antibiotic use is your beta lactam. That's the only difference. Everything else is the same. Think of it this way. If the patient is healthy, you give them a mox. It's a single drug. If the patient has comorbidities or is complicated, give them something extra. Give them a little more spice. Use two drug therapy. That would be your augmentin. Because remember, augmentin is a combination of two drugs. So for comorbidities, keep it a little spicy. Give them that combination augmentin, which is beta-lactam. If they're healthy, keep it simple, amox. Everything else is the same. You still do your beta-lactam regardless of which one you're treating plus a macrolide or your beta-lactam with a doxy. If either have a penicillin allergy, same thing. Don't use the beta-lactam, whatever it is. Switch it with cefpodoxime. And if all fails for both, you could still use your fluoroquinolone. I cannot simplify this any further. And I'm getting ahead of it and saying you're welcome because this can be confusing. But if you can take this little chart I created on the bottom with you to your exam, that's all you need to remember as to how to treat community acquired pneumonia bacteria keeping in mind your two different population um, uh, people. Thank you for choosing the Cohen Review to help you with your studies.
I hope this has made it as simple as possible and easy to remember. If you have any questions, feel free to send me an email at any time. I wish you the best of luck with your studies. Have a wonderful study session.